Welcome! If your front Mac sounds like this, this video is for you. In today's video I'm going to finally fix 105 12-speed front Mac. Uh, this is the last of 12-speed front Macs I'm going to work on. Uh, GRX is pretty much exactly the same, so there is no need for uh, creating a separate video. Uh, in this video I'm going to take it apart, uh, show you what the problems are and how to put it together. Uh, the two common issues is a larger gear, which is obviously being stripped, uh, that is easy fix, you can just rotate it by 180 degrees. Uh, the, the repair I'm going to conduct today uh, involves uh, swapping the smaller gear, which is worn out because obviously a uh, design flaw, in my opinion. So I'm going to show you how to fix it and how to prevent any future uh, issues. I hope you're going to enjoy the video. If you have any questions, please comment below. Today we're fixing front mags. Welcome to the I2GP YouTube channel. <laughs> In today's video we're going to repair front Mac 105 GI2 as you can hear in a second. We have a grinding noise and nothing moves so I'm going to take it apart, uh, diagnose the issue, hopefully fix it and then I'm going to show you step by step how you can do it yourself. Uh, to begin with you need a one and a half millimeter hex this is to remove this bolt and then Phillips to remove this screw and also you can have a pick to remove the linkage and also that one here. Uh, this link can be used on a 8050 and 9150, so previous generation or even uh, Ultegra, so you can reuse that pin. So if you're, for example, your Durace uh, Mac uh, is broken, possibly it's a lot cheaper to buy 105 these days than uh, find replacement for 12 speed, uh, for 11 speed. So we're using a pick to remove that circlip. And then that can just slide off. And as I said before, I'm not gonna do it, but uh, you can remove that clip and that linkage can be reused on uh, 11 speed. The next step is to remove this cage, so use a fine blade knife and just gently lift it up. And that pops off, obviously you've got a bushing here and then you can clean it off. So we're just going to remove that one here. And that goes off. So in similar manner, uh, as you can see, there's a seam. So I would take a knife and follow the seam. Be gentle around that area. This is a PCB location, so don't go too deep. Here you got the more movement. And around this area, uh, be careful because obviously there's a void. So seam or weld, ultrasonic weld goes around here. And the good news, obviously, 12-speed uh, uses a lot softer plastic, so uh, the cutting is a lot shorter than on 11-speed. So I'm not going to do it here because, obviously, I need to put in something stable. Uh, I'm going to return when that's uh, cut open. So the servo has been cut open. And as you can see, the design is pretty much the same as 11-speed. Uh, the only difference is 11-speed uh, has uh, two PCBs whereas they packed everything on 12 speed into one. So we can leave that cable off. And to not surprise, as you can see, the issue is again, this is a free moving pin, which holds that gear in place. And if you look closely, that pin was moving loosely like that. And that allow for that gear to move and for those teeth to wear out completely. And that's a problem. And the solution is to just to put a blob of plastic or something to prevent from that pin to slipping. So uh, sadly, I haven't found replacement, uh, but you can use that from 11 speed or GRX. Uh, 
So I'll try to look for my stash of broken mechs and see if I get uh, something where uh, that is going to work. So here is a stash of mechs I wasn't able to fix because again I don't have a spare gear. Uh, just a reminder that main gear here which is pretty much the same as here. If those teeth are worn uh, you can replace it. So obviously that is pressed in on a spline and what you do because that only rotates about 180 degrees so you just rotate it by 180 degrees and that works so what you need to do is to uh, take off these two screws on uh, 11 speed or those two screws on 12 speed then if you heat up slightly this a uh, plastic cap with magnet uh, obviously you need to remove these two so that's going to expose that and then you press that off because that's press fit and then you can again a uh, clamp that into vise obviously put some block of wood or something like that unless you've got a specific puller and then you leave that gear off then rotate it by 180 degrees and put it back on and make sure when you do it you mark position of the magnet relevant to a position of that arm because that's quite important because this is a sensor and tells a uh, uh, front mech where the arm is so if you mess this up, obviously you get, your shifting is going to be all wrong. But anyways, that aside, uh, I found replacement in my stash of uh, broken mechs. So as you can see, one on the right is worn, one on the left is all good. So I'm going to use one on the left uh, to replace that one. And uh, as soon as I find a suitable replacement, uh, I'm going to let you know. But uh, we got a bronze or brass i'm not sure what the metal is uh large gear and then you got the steel sprocket that is pressed in so i only need to find that steel sprocket and i'm sure i can press that in myself but uh, finding that gear is going to be quite challenging and but anyways obviously that goes in here very simple And then as you can see now we got a full engagement that moves and what I'm going to do as in my previous repairs I'm just going to put a blob of plastic here so that axle won't move and that's going to remain operational for a long time so now the only thing to do is to test it So as you can see, because when that operates, obviously that moves up and down and obviously uh, that drags that gear up and down. And this is without any preventative uh, measures, that axle can pop out. And when that axle pops out, that gear is slightly at an angle and this is where these teeth are going to wear out. So very simple, very basic. Uh, I'm not going to imply that was designed specifically so this is going to fail but obviously that unit is not that old anyways uh, i'm going to put some grease on these gears i put a blob of plastic so i'm gonna give you just a close up then close everything back in and uh, many people asking me what glue i use i don't use any glue uh, purely because there was a lot of forces and the torsional uh, loads on this so i use a soldering iron i follow the seam and melt plastic along so making sure obviously that when you Put a hot iron you press and move press and move press and move so obviously then you got a, a solid seam all the way around and uh, yeah just make sure obviously you don't go too too much because uh, that front cover need to fit in so uh, yeah uh, the next update is going to be when i'm going to close everything up and then we're going to put it together so as you can see i just melted some plastic on top and as long as that's flat with that area, that's going to provide a proper support because that slides in into that area here and inside, just like that. And that's ready to go, all ready to go, <laughs> ready for welding. And uh, yeah, 
no movement, no rattling. Just put some grease on the gears because obviously yeah, grease doesn't hurt and that's quite dry. So uh, next update, uh, I'm gonna show you the after first pass, how it looks like and then obviously at the second pass. Uh, the only thing you need to do, as you can see, this is a seam where that goes. So you need to, or at least what I do because I don't know any, any better, I'm going to cut that bit off so I can follow that seam and then I'm just gonna put it on top of it. So I just say, I just wire cut it, cut it off just like that. So that gives me full access. So I can make sure obviously that entire unit is a uh, weather sealed. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna put that on top of it. Exactly how it was and melt it together because obviously that acts as a space and nothing else. So this is nearly done. Uh, as you can see, this is the first pass. And after two passes, it looks much better. So obviously this is where you need to improvise, otherwise you can cut that off, but then it doesn't look that nice. Uh, you need to melt properly that area and here. Obviously that's been melted and then you put that on top of that and possibly blobs uh, two, two spots that needs to be held in place because obviously everything's gonna be clamped. So I'm gonna finish off that seam and that's gonna be ready to put together. So the unit is sealed and as I said, uh, the objective uh, it's not to hide the repair but just to make it uh, show it's watertight and it's uh, neat. And then as you can see, you got a little channel here and here and this is where that plastic cover snaps so when you're soldering it make sure obviously you're not gonna melt too much otherwise you won't have a flash fit and this is where I meant that bit here it's not pretty but again that's gonna be mainly hidden behind the frame anyway so uh, what we can do we can put just a little bit of grease here and there then we can snap that That goes in like that. Then, as you can see, that goes in. So that fits nicely. Then we're just putting that bit on. Just throw it up easily. Just a little bit of grease here and there. And then you can do this one up. Wipe an excess. So ideally when you're done, uh, you shouldn't see too much of the signs of repair. Okay, you can see here, but again, that's gonna be behind. And the only thing left to do is to plug that in, connect it, check it. So as you can see from the front, you can barely see it was repaired. You got a tiny bit here, but that's uh, everything is uh, weather tight. And as I said, because of that, I put a blob of uh, plastic, uh, it's unlikely that's going to be affected by a similar issue to uh, original design. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this uh, concludes my 12 speed front max. Uh, well, uh, GRX, I haven't done GRX, but GRX is pretty much the same as, as this one, just a different writing on the cage. Uh, uh, so uh, you can swap uh, 105 and GRX servos, so that's, that's fairly easy to do. Uh, but uh, I think I've now covered every single Shimano or main uh, Shimano uh, DID components. Uh, I'm going to post some videos, uh, some additional ones uh, with uh, quick repairs. Uh, because I, I appreciate obviously my videos quite long, but uh, if you want to cover everything, it takes time. Uh, again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, uh, please comment below. Uh, please like and subscribe to grow this channel and uh, share uh, repair tips for DI2. Thank you and until next time.